Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and today I am excited because in the last video I did a little unboxing and kind of first sneak peek, if you will, of the Micro Swiss hot end, which is an all metal drop-in replacement hot end for Creality machines, um, and I was going to be installing it on my Ender 3. Well, I've since done so, and I've been printing uh, this vice grip, uh, which is actually carbon fiber infused PETG, uh, which is something I've never printed in before, and it's been printing really, really well. Um, I mean, this is an incredibly strong part that I printed that took about 25, 26 hours. Um, I've been having a little bit of issues with uh, warping because I got some kind of weird stuff going on with my Ender, um, but that is besides the point. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to install the Micro Swiss hot end uh, in case you guys wanna print in abrasive or high temperature materials on your Ender 3. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first thing you wanna do is take everything out of the box um, or leave it in the box, that might be smarter, but regardless, be careful. There's a couple tiny little grub screws that are in a Ziploc bag and I highly recommend keeping those in there until you actually need them to avoid losing them. Uh, that's just my opinion though. So then you wanna grab a hex key and remove the two screws that are holding your fan shroud on your Ender 3. Um, this will be pretty similar whether it's a CR10 or, or Ender 2 or really any of the Creality ecosystem of machines. They're all pretty much the exact same gantry. So there's two screws holding them in place. I've got a BL Touch installed on mine so it'll look a little bit different than yours. But just go ahead and remove those and then push the uh, fan shroud off to the side. Hopefully yours is not as dirty as mine. This is what seven months of printing will do. I then took just some scissors and cut the zip tie that was holding all of the uh, cables to the Bowden tubing just so that way I can get a little bit more clearance there. Once you're done with that, grab an Allen key and remove. There is going to be two screws that are securing your hot end to the uh, X carriage. So just go ahead and unscrew those. You will be needing these um, upon installing the new hot end in place, so just make sure that all the screws and stuff you take out, you put those somewhere um, in like an ice tray or some kind of a tray so you don't lose those. So I had an interesting time trying to remove my Bowden tube. It did not want to compress. Normally you can push down the top of the Bowden tube uh, connector and it'll allow you to release the tubing. I couldn't do so, so I snipped it. Um, it it's fine, you can snip it. So try getting it out by pushing it down, but if that's not working, you can just snip off the Bowden tubing. Next, I tried removing the insulation tape that was pretty welded to the uh, hot end or the heat block. I took some scissors and then used my fingers to just kind of peel it, but as you can see, most of the adhesive was melted onto the actual heat block, so um, yours might be that way. This will be a much easier process if you do this when you just get your machine versus seven months of heavy printing later. So next there's gonna be a little Phillips screw on the side. Um, just take a little Phillips head screwdriver and remove that screw. Then there's gonna be a tiny little grub screw on the bottom, which is actually holding the uh, heating element in place. So get a small Allen key and remove that. Um, again, it might take a little bit of digging to find where those are at if you've got that adhesive stuck to it. And there's also two other tiny screws on the bottom of the existing hot end that are kind of a pain to get off, especially if yours is as corroded as mine. But uh, with a little bit of TLC, you can definitely get it off. So once we've done that, we're going to mount the new heat sink into place using those same two screws that we just took off. Uh, but now we're using the all metal micro Swiss heat sink. You wanna tighten those pretty hard. You don't need to, I mean, put crazy force into it, but you certainly want to have them nice and snug and then do a tiny little turn after that to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Once you've done that, we're gonna install the old heatsink and thermistor, not heatsink, heater cartridge and thermistor in place. For the heater cartridge, you just go ahead and hold that in place with your one hand, and then you use a little Allen key with your other hand to then clamp it down. Uh, the two little screws right there will actually compress the heater block onto the cartridge and hold it in place. 
Again, you don't have to overdo it, but still you want it tight. You don't want the heater cartridge to be slipping out during a print, so make sure you've got that secured in there pretty well. Next, you're going to take the thermistor and just push it into the thermistor hole uh, and use the little uh, Phillips screw to basically, you want to make a loop with a thermistor so that way when you put the uh, screw through the loop that you made, it will clamp down on the thermistor wires. Um, don't over tighten this one because you can pinch the wires, they're really small and delicate, but again, certainly you want it nice and snug, you don't want the screw to be able to um, come loose over time with vibrations and things like that, but uh, again, it's you kind of just kind of get a feel for it. But with the nozzle, go ahead and use your hand to just slip that into place. We're going to tighten it, but we're going to tighten it a little bit more once we've heated up the heater block later on. So for now, I just tighten it in place with my hand so that way it's at least in its slot. You're going to do the exact same thing now with the heat break. Just hand tighten it. And then once you hand tighten it, there is an included wrench. I do use that to just add a little bit more, um, well, to tighten the nozzle and the heat brake a little bit more. Uh, again, you're still gonna want to tighten it just a hair more once you've actually turned on your 3D printer and uh, heated up that heater block. But for now, just do a little bit of a turn. I put some force into this. But again, not too much force. So it's kind of, it's hard to get a gauge for you know, me saying don't put too much force, but put enough. So you don't want to strip the dang thing or break it, but you don't want it to come loose. So, you know, you be the best, I guess you be the judge of what you think makes sense. Uh, so once you've done that, you're going to insert the little grub screw into the heat sink, just basically one turn in there. So that way you can grab the heater block and insert the heat break into the slot. Uh, use one hand to hold it in place and the other hand to use the allen key to clamp that in. Um, now that is really the only thing that is holding the heater block to the heatsink, so you definitely want that nice and tight uh, and you want to make sure that your heater block is straight. So just take your time with this one and again uh, I used the long end of the allen key to line it up and then once it was tight I turned it and put a little bit more uh, elbow grease into it if you will. Or finger grease I suppose. All right, once that's done, just go ahead and shove the end of your PTFE Bowden tubing into the slot on top. And there's a, a included red clip that you just want to slide underneath that just ensures that your Bowden tubing will not pop out while printing. It's a nice little safeguard. So all I'm doing now is turning on my 3D printer and heating up the uh, hot end. This is so that way I can go ahead and again, like I said earlier, tighten down that nozzle just a bit more. I did a diagram showing you guys how to do it. Basically, I, I use the included wrench to um, hold the uh, heat break in place and then another tiny wrench to turn that nozzle and tighten it just a bit more. So once that's all tightened up, go ahead and reinstall your uh, fan and your uh, fan shrouds, all of that good stuff with those two screws, which was the first step of what we did here to initially take everything off. And the last step really is just going to be to add the silicone sock. Uh, which will just help with both insulation and keeping filament from curling up and climbing up to your hot end. So that's a really nice add-on. But yeah, this has been installed now for a little over a week. Um, I've been printing some carbon fiber uh, PETG and I'm going to now be doing some higher temp nylons, but that will be in separate videos. Uh, don't forget to smack the like button and links will be in the description to find out more about this micro Swiss all metal hot end for Creality machines. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.